And I want to take you back to before Nanado Dankwe Kufado became president. And that's because the IMF has been talking about the free SHS policy. When I spoke with uh, Professor Mawala of the United Nations University, he also spoke about the free SHS policy, which means that it's caught international attention. I have said so many times that the free SHS policy is a good one. I've said it too many times. I'm not the only one who has said it. We all agree. But the impl implementation has been problematic. And that is the verdict the IMF put on it. That it was a good one, but it was poorly done. Listen to the president at BBC Hard Talk. Listen to him. I, I, I don't accept that. I don't accept that proposition at all. Well, I'll tell, I think what, I'll tell you what the Ghanaian people, it seems to me, from reading a lot of stuff in the in the Ghanaian press, want to know is where exactly is the money going to come from next time around if you're in power for some of the very extravagant promises you've made. You, for example, have offered free secondary schooling for all Ghanaians. A promise you say you absolutely, absolutely. will deliver in four years. Uh, in absolutely, power. So absolutely. Have you costed it? How much will it cost? The costing, the costing is, is being done. I mean, very, very soon we will well, be in a position. You can't make a promise like no, that. No, no, no. Very soon, we're going to, we're very soon we're going to be putting it out. You don't know how much. I do know how much, well, but I prefer to tell the Ghanaian people directly well, before you, I tell you. Many of them prefer, can't talk. You can no, tell me. It doesn't matter. I would prefer to make that statement to the people of Ghana directly first as, as to the cost. And any so time. you do know the cost? Oh, we do. And we have a very good idea how and how and also what? we're going to finance it. Well, you don't have to, you're obviously not going to give me the figures, but just tell me how you Going we're to pay going for it. to it's clearly we're going to be a very great cost. You've got to train the teachers. You've got to build new schools. All of that is all of that is, has been adequately costed, and we believe that first of all, the new revenues will help. Johnny's more of that was the president at the BBC, and mind you, this was not the first time the president was talking about free SHS because it has been the main flagship program on which he campaigned to become president. And you heard when BBC asked him, how much is it going to cost? He says, well, the costing had been done, but he prefers to tell the Ghanaian people. And so it was that he returned from that BBC interview, won the elections, never told us how much free SHS was going to cost. I remember that when the conversation started in 2017, you know, some questions were raised. In fact, even before that, questions were raised about, of course, there were people who disagreed and said that, well, it's also going to happen, never can happen. There were also those who thought that there has to be a gradualist approach and all of that. In 2017, when that conversation came up, and even the mention of our heritage fund was, 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 was in the discussion because we said we're going to use that to kickstart the free SHS program. And you remember that, the back and forth. Mr. Ken Oforiata, who's finance minister, raised a question. And he said, we need to target this. He came under heavy attack. He sounded like the only lone voice in his party and in the government to have been thinking along those lines. The rest were just thinking along the line of the president, which today the IMF says was flawed, poorly done. Listen to Mr. Oforiata. Um, I don't think it's something that any of us can can compromise on, you know, and, and true, um, it, it may be that, that there have to be changes in the way in which we are administering it, mm. you know, I, I can't take my child to Achimota or Dogono and then leave him or her and drive away and can afford it and not pay anything, whilst I can pay for 10 people. We need to, so why did we, you we, implement it then? We, we need to question, well, we need to, you need to begin to get the data to then be discriminatory in how um, and who pays and who doesn't pay. But you could have done that before, Ken. If you, I, I'm, if, not if sure, you start, I'm not sure that we have... If you start with the free SHS and then now you're saying, okay, 90,000 have come on board. But there are a lot of people who have benefited who could have paid. Yeah. So that was Mr. Ken Oforiata. And... The technocrats agreed with him. The people in there, Professor Stephen Adai, uh, Professor Anastaiti, Professor Ivan Adai Mensah, Professor Jane Nano Pukwajima, I had to bring her last because we always will put politics to it, and that's what is making us fall as a nation. They raise questions. There are people within the educational space, Kofi Asari of Education World, Bright Apia Child Rights International, they all ask questions. Now, the point is, when Mr. Foriata said this, then Minister for Information, Alaji Dr. Mustafa Amit, he said, free SHS, ignore Oforiata's dead opinion. He has no locus. He was speaking to journalists. 
He was information minister. He said Oforiate's opinion that we should target is dead and that he had no locus. That the whole finance minister, who is the manager of the public purse, he said ignore it. He had no locus. I'm trying to let you understand how we got here. Because everybody else was stuck with the president and was following him. And in fact, even in this one, he said the man whose vision they are carrying along is, is the, what's important. Maybe we'll see the first paragraph. Let's go. He said the man whose vision they are carrying on is, is the one they have to follow. And that Mr. Foriata had no locus. And he even went on to say that Mr. Foriata cannot bring a matter on education to cabinet. He has to take the education minister to bring to cabinet. The education minister at the time was Mr. Matthew, Dr. Matthew yeah. Fuku Prempe. He also agreed with the president. Today, IMF is telling us that we got it wrong. But listen to Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, vice president of the republic. He was on Peace FM. They asked him a question about the review. He said it is senseless. Listen. Of service. Nana Kufuado is really a servant leader. And he's, do, he's done so much. And in this election, it is very, very important, sir. We have to consolidate what we have done. We have done so many things. We have the, the, the one district, one factory, one constituency, one ambulance. So many projects that we have started. It's very, very important. Platinum for food and jobs. Say, we should consolidate that pro progress and, and we should protect it, mm -hmm. everything, because if you make a change, uh, you will see an unwinding of the programs, like free SHS. I have no doubt in my mind that the, the, the credibility and sincerity of the NDC on free SHS uh, cannot be trusted. Um, they give so many different um, versions of what they think about it. And meanwhile, as far as free SHS, they say they will review. What does it mean? Review, no. But, but yeah, bring a policy. This has been in, in place for the last four years. So, now ABC. So that was the vice president. And I agree with him that if you are proposing a review, you must come with the elements that you want to review. That's contrary to the views that had earlier been expressed. And people said, we're not going to review because a review means cancellation. Remember the press conference we had after that uh, uh, cabinet retreat at the Pediasi Lodge? We came back to say a review means cancellation. But before that, questions have been raised have been even about the inclusion of private schools. And mind you, in this country, we have all gone to secondary school in this country. In this country, at the time when the public or the state-owned uh, secondary schools could not harbor all the children coming from the busy schools, the private schools came to a save. They came to the save. The private schools now... In, in that time, they mentioned that they were collapsing. Listen to Naftali Chebafo. The private sector is the engine of growth for development. Then, any policy that seeks to collapse the existing activities of private sector should be reconsidered. Okay. That is why we believe me that in as much as the policy is very good, and as much as the policy seeks the interest and the well-being of students and that of parents and Ghanaians as a whole, it is also imperative that as we sit, we look at what are the things that can equally help the private ones to be sustained. These questions were asked, but in a proper Yentiobia fashion, we kept quiet and we said, we will not review. I don't know where Mr. Chebafo is these days. He used to be the, you know, the, the, the PRO for Ideal College while I was at um, TV Africa. He used to come for interviews. And then later, I, I saw he was PRO for CHOPS. The last time I heard, I think it was in one of the ministries, a spokesperson or something. I don't know where he is now. But could he have been pushed out because the private schools were falling? So he was pushed out into the government sector? I don't know. I'm asking my questions. But... With all these cogent questions that they raised, there was still a Yen Tobia attitude. Listen to the president. 
is free senior high school policy is a policy for the development of our country. We're not going back on it. We're not going to have it reviewed. We're going to continue with it. We're going to improve on it. We're going to develop the infrastructure so that we can develop the human capacity of our country. That is the position of the new patriotic party and of its president, Nana Adodankwa Kufuado. No review today, no review tomorrow, no cancellation. This was the president and his posture. The president is not an educationist. The educationists have spoken. Professor Dai, Professor Aite, Professor Dai Mensa, Professor Jina Nopukwa Jibani have people think tanks in education. They had raised the question. He said, we will not do it today, we will not do it tomorrow because the suggestion has come from his political opponent, John Mahama. Today, the IMF seems to be vindicating what John Mahama had said. That if we had not put politics ahead of us, because the, the president, when he spoke at BBC, said his, his idea was to educate a whole generation. On that interview, Ashesi University's founder was mentioned on Hard Talk on BBC Chinese that he had saw, seen to the education of a whole generation. And you know the story of Ashesi and how their graduates are different. That was the concept. So where did we get it wrong? Why were we so blinded with politics? To the extent that we spent almost 70 million Ghana cities in buying past questions, past school for children. Because we're interested in just the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, and not the quality. Chinese Listen to Information Vice. Minister Kojo Ponkrumah. This claim to possibly review the Chinese program, Vice. if Mr. Mahama were ever to regain Chinese power, Vice. is simply a veiled threat to collapse the program. Wow, look. Why wow, look at this? Chinese vice. That, that to review. So why is government not telling IMF now that the review that IMF is suggesting is a veiled threat to collapse the free SHS program? You see what politics has done to us in this country. All the gentlemen have played their videos. Very, very well-educated people. Very, very knowledgeable individuals. Knowledgeable individuals who have benefited from the best of education in this country. Some even had education for free in this country. Very knowledgeable people. Let's see what the IMF is saying. That's what we'll wrap up with. And yet, when you hear some of the comments, look, push it up. This is the IMF's poverty reduction and social spending in Ghana. That's their focus on the document. And today, the government will not be able to Ghana's talk back right. at IMF like it talked back to us when we mentioned the review because they need the IMF's money to sustain the economy, to get back on track because we are in a hole. Chinese fight. So we cannot go and do pan pan there. On sunrise. But here we do pan pan. We did a lot of pan pan. We messed up the children. It says Ghana spends close to 4% of GDP on education with good results in terms of enrollment, but Poor learning outcomes. Chinese so, Nkolani Gugu School, Mohobat, Adishani Dier, Nkoye, the flagship program, Free Senior High School, which covers the full cost of secondary education, has helped increment, increase enrollment, but is poorly targeted. Can Ufriata mention this? The Chinese professors vice. mentioned it. We didn't listen. We said, we won't change today. We won't change tomorrow. Key, uh, key identified areas of potential improvement of education spending include strengthening primary education resources, better teacher training, and stronger performance-based funding practices. This is the problem. Now, this problem has been diagnosed in the past. The vice president called the review senseless. Kojo Pong Kruma said a review means cancellation. The president said we will review today, we will review tomorrow. Mr. Uh, Dr. Mustafa Hamid said the, 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 the mention of targeting by Mr. Furiata is actually a dead opinion, and he had no locus. Today, here yeah, we are begging and bending the IMF, and they're telling us the truth that our own people have been telling us. Chinese if only we had vice. listened. If only we had listened. Chinese we wouldn't vice. be where we are now. Go to our secondary schools and go and check School feeding, go and check the quality of food, go and check the textbooks, go and check the decks, go and check the beds. Johnny's Bite. Johnny's Bite on Sunrise. Johnny's Bite. Johnny's Bite on Sunrise. Hey, you, uh, uh, Papa. You know Papa. <laughs> <laughs> Figuratively, he bites as hard as he can. 